Well, hello there, ladies. At Jets, I'm Tammy Sipniewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. In today's video, what I'm doing is a lot of smaller requests that have been sent in. So normally I get a request for a video. It's enough to construct a whole entire tutorial out of. But I get a lot of little ones where there's just no way that's going to happen. And YouTube really likes when your videos are a minimum of 10 minutes. Just in case you ever wanted to know if you're going to monetize your channel soon, just know that when you do, try to get your videos to be at least 10 minutes long. So let's talk about the things that we're going to touch on in today's video. Got a request from a gentleman in India who wants to know how to do subtitles. Now, I don't know if he means in LumaFusion in general, because that's literally just dropping in a title, or whether he means in YouTube. So I am going to show you guys both ways why I choose the certain frame rates that I do for my transitions, like in yesterday's video, why I chose the nine frames between each action. So I will talk about that. Uh, saving your transitions on a new iPad. So when you get a new iPad and you download LumaFusion, you're all excited because who's not excited to get a new iPad? None of your stuff is going to be there. Whatever you've put into that particular device stays in that device. So I'm going to show you guys how to move all of your LUTs, how all of your beautiful presets that you've built and your transitions. We're going to show you guys how to get those over into your new iOS device and also how to add pictures into the little picture library, you know, by those like crazy little cartoon pictures that they already have in there. How can we get our own pictures in there? That's some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. If we wanted to add subtitles to my video here, we would just add a title basically. Let's hit the plus sign and choose overlay title. We'll double tap that to edit it. And then we just tap it again, hit the pencil and paper, and then we would just type in whatever it is that we're saying. I think I said Libby be good. We'll choose yellow. We can change the font, whatever it is, the font that we want it to be. Put Position it on the screen wherever we want it. And wherever it is, you'd have to keep changing it. In case that's what you mean, however, I think that's probably not what you mean. So let's go over to YouTube and we'll get there by Google Chrome. Let's start a new tab here. We will choose YouTube. I'm already signed into YouTube. If you're not, you may have to sign in. So let's hit the three little dots here and we will choose request a desktop site. Once we're there, we just tap on our picture and choose YouTube Studio, and that is going to bring up our dashboard. So let's go to videos, and let's just choose, let's say, I don't know, this one. We'll go to more options, see where it says basic. Well, let's go to more options. Here is where you're going to put in your subtitles. You're going to choose the language that you created the video in. I always speak English, so I just have English as my native language. You can choose any language that you speak, and YouTube is going to automatically generate the language for you. If you have a specific script and subtitles that you want to add to your video, and normally you can generate those in a program like Notepad, then you would upload it for your individual video just by tapping on this blue button right here. And then you choose with or without timing, and then you continue, and then you browse to find the script in your computer, wherever it is, and then you would add it on in. And then, of course, it would ask you to save it once you have done that. And that's subtitle. So let's go ahead and go to the rest of the requests. So someone requested why I choose the specific frame timing that I chose. So let's go to yesterday's video. Now, with transitions, you don't want them too long and drawn out. That is going to look unnatural. So your transition needs to be, I would say, a maximum of like two seconds. So let's go ahead and double tap on this transition. So bearing in mind that I want it no longer than two seconds, let's go to where I have all the keyframing. One second is going to be 24 frames a second. Now, if I have two actions within one second, and a delay period of where I'm switching over to the other transition, well, now I know I have to divvy that up by three. 24 divided by three is nine. So that's why I chose the nine frames in between actions. If you want your transition to be longer, you of course can go longer. You don't have to stick with my two second template, but I think two seconds is really enough for your transitions. 
The next thing on the list is saving transitions and other things to your new iPad. This is why it's vital for you to have cloud services or some other service where you can put your animations off into some space where you can quickly import them into your new iPad. And you, you guys, I have to say, I think the cloud is really the best. It's the most accessible. I don't understand why people don't use it. You get five gigs for free. Why not utilize them? So let's go ahead and just double tap on this so that we can get into the edit window. So when we go to color and effects, if you hit the star, this is where a lot of your effects are going to be saved. So let me see, I built a couple little transitions myself. Let me go all the way down. Transition clip number one. So I wanna send this into my cloud to bring it onto a new device. You just press tap and hold and that is going to bring up this fly out menu. I'm going to hit share. I am going to hit files and I am going to name it as transition, whatever number, whatever number you want to use, I will put 1A and hit the share button again. And this is going to ask me where I want to send it. So I am going to send it yes to my cloud at the particular folder that I want it to be in, replace it. Now I want to do the second one. So I'm going to tap and hold, share again, 1B because you want to label them things that you're going to remember that they are. And I'm going to hit save. There, it says that it was already there because I've already saved these because I've moved a couple things over to a different device. Okay, so now that is going to be uh, your effects. Now let's go over to uh, fit, frame and fit. There's more stuff up here. So let's go ahead and hit this star. There's other things that are going to be here. Zoom. Oh, no, these are things that I made for a glitch effect. So once again, we are going to tap and hold, hit share, and we are going to send this file. Share. And that's going to send that everything into the cloud. Obviously, if you have a lot of things in here, it's going to take a little bit. Let's say that you want to export some LUT packages. Maybe you purchased Peter McKinnon's LUT package and you want to make sure you can get that onto your new device. If you can't find his original email where he sent you that LUT package, you can always export it from LumaFusion itself. So let's go ahead and hit the cube. And this is where all of your different LUTs are going to be saved. All right, so here's my autumn LUT. So I am going to press and hold it. I am going to share. Once again, just going to send it to the file, keep it the name I want it to be, and hit the share button, and that's going to send that off into my cloud. So if you have quite a few things, this could take you know a few minutes, but if you want your new stuff in your new iPad, that's just what you're gonna have to do. So let's go ahead and launch the cloud. Let's go to my gear channel where I put all of this stuff. So now what I wanna do is make sure I'm going to designate all of this stuff to the right folders. Now this is my LUT. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna select my LUT. If you have more than one, then select all of the LUTs together because these are going to go in different folders and it's important you put them in the right one. So now what we wanna do is hit move. Let's go to on my iPad and we are going to choose LumaFusion. So in LumaFusion, what you wanna do here is go to your presets, and now we're going to choose LUTs, and I have two different packs here, so I am going to choose LUT2, and I'm gonna hit copy. And that is going to put all of those LUTs into LumaFusion where you can quickly access them. Now what we wanna do is move over the effects and the motions. And these are gonna be two different files, so just pay attention to what you're doing. Let's open up the gear channel where I have these saved. Okay, so you see here, these are effects. The other two things that I brought in were motions, and they are going to be labeled as motion so that you can see the difference. See where this says motion preset and the other one said effects. Well, now that we're in motion, I'm closer to the motion ones, let's go ahead and do that. So hit select, choose the two motions or however many that you have, choose move 
And this is going to bring up this folder again. Go to on my iPad, go to LumaFusion, and we are going to go to presets, and we are going to tap motions and put copy to the motions, and that is going to drop those into the motions. So now we want to transfer the effects. So let's go ahead and go up to the transitions that I moved over here. There they are. Once again, we're going to hit select, choose the ones that we want to move on over, hit move. Once again, it's going to drop down this, go to my iPad, go to LumaFusion, go to your presets, choose effects, and just hit copy, and that is going to copy those effects directly into LumaFusion. So let's go ahead and launch LumaFusion. I need to close it out though. Anytime that you put anything into LumaFusion, it's always best to close it out and relaunch it just to make sure it's there. There might be duplicates in there, so let's go ahead and go to the star down here where I have the two. Yeah, so it basically just, because I'd already had them in here, it just basically overwrote them. So I can just ditch this one. So let's go to the motions now by hitting frame and fit and we will hit the star up here and we are looking for uh, the zoom blur. So yep, there it is duplicated again. So that's how you move things in and out of, oh, well let's go to, let me make sure the, my LUT is there too, I'm sure it is. And it looks like for the LUT, it just overwrote and that's how you would move everything into your new iOS device. It might take a little bit of time, but if you want it in there, go ahead and do it. So what's next on the list here? And we're coming down to the very last request, and that's adding pictures. So let's go ahead and hit the plus sign and choose overlay title. Let's double tap on the title. We're gonna throw the title away and hit the plus sign and we will choose add an image. So how can we get an image up here? Instead of using these little icons that LumaFusion has, how can we get our own little pictures in here? So let's go ahead and just throw that out. And we are gonna close out LumaFusion because it's important to reset LumaFusion whenever you're adding anything in because if you don't and you launch it, it won't be there. So let's open up my gear channel and see what we have here for the pickings. Look what I have here, the YouTube play button. So what I want to do is get that into LumaFusion so that I can always have it just to quickly pull it out if I want it. And I am going to select and choose the play button. And now I'm going to choose move and the same thing is going to happen. You're gonna have that drop down menu on my iPad and we will choose LumaFusion. And now we're going to choose our presets and we are going to choose title images and hit copy. And that is going to put that YouTube play button in those images. So let's go ahead and launch LumaFusion. Overlay title, double tap it. I'm just gonna throw this away. Hit the plus sign and choose image. And there you go. Here is our image that we imported into LumaFusion. So there you go, you guys. That's how you can import pictures into LumaFusion. Another quick little question that I got, and this really has nothing to do with me. It's my friend, his channel is Mobile Video Editing. I've sent people there to his channel in the past and they can't find it. So when you type in Mobile Video Editing, that's the name of his channel, you don't see it. You can't find it. So I am going to leave a link to my friend's channel so that you guys can go there. Did I do it? Did I make 10 minutes? You know I did 10 minutes. <laughs> Easy. I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's been using my Amazon links. I really appreciate it, you guys. It's weird because even if you don't buy the thing that is linked there, but somehow you just get to Amazon through my links, somehow I get like a portion of that sale. So if you've been doing that, I really appreciate it. It does help to support the channel and get all the stuff that I'm getting for the studio. So a thank you very much. And someone asked if I would please do a video showing exactly what I've earned through YouTube AdSense and also the Amazon affiliate links. And I am going to film that right now because 100%, I want to be very transparent with you guys exactly what you're contributing to me personally. And I thank you so much for that. So yes, I'm on it. Don't worry, I got it.
Well, I thank you so much for joining me, you guys. And until next time, wear your sunblock. I mean it. Even though it's winter, wear your sunblock.